In today's conversation, I would like to discuss with you my understanding and recent experiences of listening exclusively to intuition. I consider intuition as knowing beyond thinking. Being as I am, as we've been discussing lately, clear thinking arises as to what to relate ideally to appearances from the premise of being as I am, which intuition reveals clearly. So I trust you'll enjoy today's conversation and you'll find it to be very inspiring to live from your heart and intuition and relate ideally to the outer expressions of life from the premise of being as I am. Thus, I title today's conversation mind map, Life Appearing from Within. I would like to discuss intuition and tie this into our conversations lately about being still and knowing that I am. William Walker Atkinson said, In the region of the higher planes of the inner consciousness are to be found that wonderful aspect or phase of mind, which we call intuition, which Webster defines as direct apprehension or cognition, immediate knowledge as in perception or consciousness involving no reasoning process. It is a higher form of that which we know as instinct, the difference being chiefly that instinct belongs to the phenomena of the below conscious planes and has to do chiefly with that which concerns the physical body and well-being, while intuition belongs to the above conscious planes and has to do with the higher part of the nature of the individual. I like that. The higher part of the nature of the individual. As we've been discussing, I and the Father are one. The individual I that appears emanate from the one universal cause within, which appears as and animates all that appears to reflect what the individual imagines of that source. He says, instinct sends the messages up to the intellect while intuition sends its messages down to the intellect. I like this. Instinct sends its messages up to the intellect, while intuition sends its messages down to the intellect. The way I relate to this is the individual living from the premise of past beliefs, which may be true or untrue, and relating to the five sensory experience to determine what to think next. Yet intuition sends its messages down to the intellect. So accurate thinking, the still small voice, hunches, inspirations, it may be different than what I was thinking before in relation to appearances, which we can call maybe instinctual beliefs or perhaps beliefs that were helpful at a particular point. He says, Many of the highest forms of pleasurable things come from the region of intuition. Art, music, poetry, all these come from above, from the region of intuition. I like to relate a lot to Romans 12 too, in which it states, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I relate this over to intuition, because if the appearances seem to suggest otherwise, of being who I truly desire to be, as I say many times, all the individual desires truly is to be as I am. If 
not thinking accurately from the premise of being as I am, then I have the opportunity to renew the mind by changing the way I think. Now the individual may say they don't know what to think or they don't know how to think for themselves. And so this is where intuition plays the role. By being still and knowing that I am, we talked about this in Tuesday's video, I'll link in the description to it, clarity arises. A person knows what to do, what not to do. In conversations, they know what to say, what not to say. As also articulated Romans 12.2 in the New Living Translation as don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. In my personal experiences, and I mentioned this over the last couple of years, I listen to intuition exclusively because I've realized that the world that appears reflects beliefs which may be true from the premise of being that I am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment or untrue where I have not accepted self and no shame and condemnation. You are aware of what you're thinking and as you are aware of what you're thinking, you realize you transcend the thinking. I may think this. I may think that. Is it from the premise of being as I am? Knowing that I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, is my thinking from the premise of being as I am? Intuitively, we know. Yet, why does the individual continuously and persistently look to this outer world to determine what to think? Well, because they're going around in circles. They're looking at the world that appears, which is the world that appears from past imaginal activity. Whether it would be true to love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, or untrue. And they continue to repeat those patterns because they continue to think the same way. And what is being proposed here is to receive via intuition the accurate thinking in relation to appearances. And so, Precisely when it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, it appears that way. It appears that the individual is copying the behaviors and the customs of this world. I say this many times, the world isn't suggesting anything. The individual is the only suggester within of what appears next. In other words, as I'm having this conversation with you, you are thinking what this means to you. Whether it be helpful, whether it won't be helpful, whether it would be true, whether it would be untrue, you determine that. If the individual blindly accepts what appears as the outer expressions of life, that clearly appear to them from intuition as untrue, as truth, then they continue to replicate those same experiences as the outer expressions of life, be it relationships, be it in their business life, personal life, all areas of life. The theater of life continues to play out according to what the individual thinks, whether they are aware of it or not. Now, what to think? How to think? Well, what I recommend is thinking for yourself. 
what I recommend is listening to yourself and trusting yourself. Because you know how you truly desire to live life. You know exactly what I mean when I say all I truly desire is to be as I am. Knowing that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I'll be thinking in relation to appearances from the premise of being as I am. Are we relating ideally to appearances, whatever they may be? And by appearances, I'm talking about the physical appearances, outer aspects of life, interactions with people, information that's presented as well. The individual may think that information is presented. They are reading some information and the information is telling them what to think. It appears to them that way because they have not realized that they are the only suggester in relation to the information. The information is not suggesting anything to them. Even if the information says, do this or don't do this, I suggest this to you, I don't suggest this to you, the individual is the only one that is suggesting what the information means to them. as he says here, and it's a nuanced point which I would like to further explore. This is a far different thing from being led by an outside intelligence, which may or may not be qualified to lead. But the spirit within each of us has our interests at heart and is desirous of our own best good and is not only ready, but willing to take us by the hand and lead us on. In the higher regions of the mind are locked up intuitive perceptions of all truth, and that those who can gain access to these regions will know everything intuitively, and as a matter of clear sight, without reasoning or explanation. So we also speak a lot about overthinking. And by that I mean continuously entertaining thoughts of disharmony in mind that spawned from the untrue beliefs. The untrue beliefs are generating mental chatter in which an individual continues to argue in their own mind. They may even conjure up individuals family, friends, in their own mind and proceed to argue with them in their own mind. Now, if those conversations appear as an outer expression of life, say those individuals appear, to present the conversation that was going on in their own mind, which we see as others echo what we whisper in secret, then we know clearly that we are regenerating those experiences which are not from the premise of being as I am. The individual now clearly knows that they are identifying with those beliefs and continuously perpetuating them in and as the outer expressions of life, although they may not be desirable. So when he refers to as this is a far different thing from being led by an outside intelligence, as we go deeper into our conversations, we realize that the intelligence is within, infinite intelligence within. It only appears without as outside intelligence. If an individual thinks for themselves, they'll realize that there is no outside intelligence. It's what the individual is relating to in mind in relation to what could appear as outside intelligence that determines what appears next. And what is being proposed here is that the individual knows intuitively what to relate to what appears to the individual as outside intelligence from within. Because spirit within each of us has our best interests at heart. I and the Father are one. 
So, do not be conformed to this world is an illusion. It's an illusion for the individual to appear to be conformed to this world. The reality is the individual is not conformed to this world. Truly, I and the Father are one. The individual imagines what the world appears as. And so, one of the things that helps me go through the various commitments that I go through, which is back to back to back, is trusting and knowing via intuition I will know what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say. As mentioned, over the last few weeks I've been traveling and there have been back-to-back -back commitments from morning till night, online and offline. And there were moments where it could have been tempting to think inaccurately. And by that I mean to think that, wait, I don't know how to fit in all these commitments into the schedule. It may appear that it might not fit in because it appears that I have a particular amount of time each day, yet there are a particular amount of initiatives that are being committed to. How could they possibly fit into this time schedule? But intuitively, I know that some way, somehow, it will work out. Intuition arises and says, Are you trying to control the appearances? Are you trying to identify to past thinking related to beliefs that are looking to be released, that are untrue? Perhaps they were helpful before. And then stillness. I let it be. And then what's interesting is to observe People changing, the environment's changing, schedules changing, and some way, somehow, it manages to fit everything that I committed to, ideally. Even so much, for example, I was taking an Uber from one location to another location yesterday, and I arrived at the exact time for the meeting. Even though at that particular time, it could be considered that there was a lot of traffic. Yet, for some reason, there wasn't traffic at that particular time. From the point that I was leaving to the point of my destination. Now, I've seen many of these kinds of occurrences. Intuition arose and said, book the Uber at this very particular time even though the untrue belief may have suggested, I need to book this earlier. Because if I don't book this earlier, then I wouldn't be able to arrive at that particular time for the meeting. Now, what was interesting was what I was involved with prior to that meeting, it wasn't the appropriate time to leave yet. So that could be confusing to an individual. Yet the individual does nothing. It appears to do stuff. Yes, I can of myself do nothing. The Father within doeth the work. There's only God. Only God appearing. And God appearing to animate all that appears through the individual mind. So what is the individual thinking of that I am? Is it from the premise of being as I am? Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Yet the individual ideally relates to the outer expressions of life from the premise of being as I am. Intuition arises and guides the way. And we know what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say. And it may go against what the individual considers to be conventional thinking. Nevertheless, Intuition guides the way of what is accurate and true in relation to being how you truly desire to be, in relation to the appearances. He says, genius also comes from that enchanted region. All great writers, poets, painters, musicians, actors, and artists 
of all kinds and modes of expression have received their inspiration from these higher regions of the mind. All great artists, working through the various mediums of expression, noted above, have felt their best work was rather the result of the labor of some higher power rather than of our own everyday self. So this is the nuanced point. I can of myself do nothing. The Father within doeth the work. There's only God. Only God appears, and only God appears to animate all that appears through the individual mind. We witness through the five senses what has been imagined, whether it would be considered to be true by the individual or not. For it says in the Bible, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. The individual chooses what the Father appears as. Because there's only God, and only God appearing, and only God appearing to animate all that appears through the individual mind. So what does the individual say of that I am in relation to appearances? Is it from the premise of being I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, for I and the Father are one? Or is it from the premise of separation, not love, not happiness, not peace, not bliss, not fulfillment? The individual chooses what the world is experienced as, one of harmony or one of disharmony. The beautiful thing is intuition reveals the true and accurate way to relate to the experiences. Yet the individual may be identified to the appearances, the information, which again, as they identify in relation to the appearances through their beliefs, which spawn the thoughts that seem to convince them they're convincing themselves to relate to the experiences from the premise of the untrue beliefs, they continue to play out those cycles again, again, and again. And we could say their life experiences remain the same. The similar patterns play out. What is proposed here is, as he said, all great writers, poets, painters, musicians, actors, and artists of all kinds and modes of expression have received their inspiration from these higher regions of the mind, true self-expression, as the outer expressions of life, be it art, painting, music, acting, writing, any form of creative expression, entrepreneurial endeavor, relationships. And I choose to create from the premise of being, I am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Go all the way till the end. Be still and know that I am. By being still and knowing that I am, clarity arises. And you know what to say, what not to say, what to think, what not to think in relation to appearances. Clarity from being still and knowing that I am. Intuition guides the way. That is thinking from the premise of being as I am. I like how Florence Scovel Shin had said it one time. She said, Prayer is you telephoning to God, and intuition is God telephoning to you. For I, the individual, and the Father, the all, are one. And so everything is received within. Only God gives and fulfills desires. Only God gives the accurate thinking in relation to appearances. Romans 12, 2. And only God gives intuition in relation to appearances, which may go against what, again, the individual considers to be conventional thinking. Think this way, don't think this way, be like this, don't be like this. Those words have no power until you activate them by imagining what they mean to you. So this is what I mean by life appearing from within. It's always appearing from within. Because there's only God appearing, only God 
appearing to animate all that appears from imagination. Life is appearing from within. So, are we listening to ourselves, trusting ourselves, thinking for ourselves, relating ideally from the premise of being that I am in relation to appearances? This is a practice. More and more so each day. We can question what we're believing. We can question what we're thinking in relation to appearances. Is it from the premise of being how you truly desire to be? All I truly desire to be is to be as I am. Such as, for example, I have, I am, this particular way, that particular way, from the premise of knowing that I am. Clarity arises. We can call that authentic, true self-expression. And so it's expressed as the outer expressions of life. Intuitive expressions. For example, I notice this in conversations. When the individual speaks from the heart or creatively expresses from the heart any form of creative expression, the individuals that experience that creative expression acknowledge that I am speaking to their heart. Heart to heart communication. Art is a form of heart to heart communication. I notice this while I'm in my flow, which I remain in my flow. I make flow a priority. I've been making flow a priority since 2017. I created a flow based life series. All I'm saying in the flow based life series is be as you are. I'll link in the description to it. By being as I am, it automatically manifests as what I do, what don't do, creative expressions, and I don't judge them. I put them out. So, for example, I get asked the question, you're always coming out with content, back to back to back to back, and it doesn't seem like you run out of ideas. How can I run out of ideas? I and the Father are one. The individual, through overthinking, through identifying with untrue beliefs may generate the illusion that they are running out of ideas. You don't run out of ideas. You can only think that you're running out of ideas. I wouldn't recommend that. I recommend being as you are, be in flow. And that what I'm referring to here, which could sound very theoretical, is experientially no. As the theory points to the foundational reality, being as I am, and living from that premise. I and the Father are one. And as I and the Father are one, all are in harmony and in contribution to actualizing the vision. For only God gives and fulfills desires, and intuition guides the way. We listen to the intuition. How? By purifying the mind, releasing identification to beliefs that are untrue, that generates the mental chatter. By being still and knowing that I am. Self-inquiry. Who am I? As you acknowledge that you transcend the thoughts, transcend the emotion, transcend the beliefs, you understand that you were choosing what to believe, what to think, what to imagine in relation to appearances, what the individual was relating to or labeling the emotions and thus experiencing them that particular way. As I always say, emotions are energy in motion. Let them be. Because then the individual might say, the emotions are holding me back, or the beliefs are holding me back, or the thoughts are holding me back. And so they make enemies of thoughts, beliefs, mind, emotions, outer expressions of life. Those are objects of experience. You are the experiencer of life experiences, those objects of experience, which I consider any mental phenomena to be mental objects and physical phenomena to be physical objects, you transcend them. And knowing you transcend them, you choose. And what do you choose from? Well, as I always say, 
what the individual truly desires is to be as I am. Intuition reveals what to think in relation to the appearances. So the practice of meditation, 20 minutes a day, I do a Vipassana meditation. I've been doing it since 2008. I'll link in the description to a video, which is a guided meditation, a guided Vipassana meditation. That has been very helpful because it contributed to bringing me to the realization that I and the Father are one and I transcend the thoughts. Also, as we discuss in our Neville Goddard conversations, the practice of imagining lovingly, mediating God to others, mediating God to outer expressions of life, as God is love, and to imagine lovingly of outer expressions of life, is a form of true self acceptance and true self expression. Only God appears and animates all that appears through what appears as the individual mind. The individual I is an emanation of God. God created the I and creates all that appears through the individual mind of that I. The I may choose what God appears as. Yet ultimately, I realize that what I truly desire is to be as I am. And so I intuitively understand and distinguish between clear thinking and inaccurate thinking. And so being in flow, everything is crystal clear. And then we understand clearly, as I always say, everything happens ideally automatically from the premise of being as I am. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, from the premise of being as I am, intuition arises to relate to the appearances from the premise of being as I am. Clearly, I know exactly what to do, what to say, and what to relate to experiences from the premise of true self-acceptance experienced as flow of creative, true self-expression in and as the outer expressions of life. Art, music, poetry, a wonderful business, harmonious relationships, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as far as the senses proceed. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.